All right, guys. Uh, Top Cutlass here, checking in. No, so we got the uh, big block budget holds right here. I kind of set up my workstation. Um, so in the last couple days, I've kind of put the wheels in motion. I got rod bearings. Big shout out to JJ for uh, picking them up for me at Canola's Automotive because all the other bearings I could have sourced, sourced, sourced through Summit or Jex, they were coming directly from the manufacturer. Nothing was in stock at Summit, so I know that can usually be a delay, and I'm trying to have everything ready this week so that next week we can per perhaps actually assemble this so that it'll get actually the engine will be built. Now, the idea of actually building it and putting it on the run stand the same weekend isn't going to happen, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But some plans changed. Bear with me on that end. But you can see I got everything organized. All of our parts that are going to be reused are on this side. So we got our rods, our piston assembly, rod and piston assemblies. I got our main caps. I have the number three cap in there because I was checking end plate. Our timing chain, which is actually still good. Um, you know, we got our balancer bolt, our fuel pump eccentric bolt and bolt, the slinger, all that stuff. You got the intake down here, my mountain of carburetors. Cylinder heads, and on this side, I have the camshaft, our bearings, our rings, our gaskets, all that fun stuff. So, um, I made my list, a couple things, actually one thing just came to mind, I'm going to have to put on there. Uh, Alright, so I got a list of things that I need. I need to get like a RTV, a tube, and a couple of squeeze tubes, so like I need a big, like, caught gun tube, which I like to use. Um, kerosene, uh, I'm picking up a couple of new measuring tools for my engine build because I'm also going to be building that 347 stroker and on the last engine that I built, I realized I really need to buy new measuring tools for building an engine as I have done quite a few and they, they, those tools certainly paid for themselves over the last seven years, but they're getting old. They were old when I got them. So a bunch of tools, that's actually the most money I'm going to spend is on measuring tools for this build, but it's not going to be part of the build cost. Um, I need an oil pump pickup for the Moroso pin that we're going to be welding up because it's got a bunch of holes that somebody like drilled in it for something and we're going to hope that it works but this is a, actually this is a Mylodon pin. Either way, we need a pickup, bolt on pickup for the high volume oil pump. Um, either a factory one or a Moroso one, I can extend it, weld it, place it the right way. I'm going to need an HEI. Uh, I'm probably going to end up buying a cheap China Bay HEI and just throwing a good module in it. And I'm going to need valve covers. Uh, that's what I just wrote down. So really, don't need a lot. I have everything. Um, now, the thing that's going to be happening here, and I hope that this is cool to talk about, I kind of posted up on Facebook that if somebody wanted to partner up and kind of build a grudge car, I'm going to have an engine, and I actually have a Turbo 400 down there. So my idea is that now I want to get the engine built first, let it sit for a week or two, and in the meantime, build that transmission. And then we are going to put this on the engine run stand, but it's destined to go in a different car. It's not going to go in any of my cars. Um, I actually got a shout out from JJ on Facebook, and he said he would like to possibly put this in his uh, one of his cars. And I'm like, cool, I'm totally game. Let's make it happen. You know, my goal is to have the engine and trains ready to go by the end of the month. And it would be really cool if he and I can coordinate it. And I think this is probably the most we've actually talked about it because we kind of messaged back and forth. He's at a race actually right now. But we messaged back and forth a little bit. So if you're watching this, JJ, this is the part where we need to come together. <laughs> so the idea is to have this engine and trains ready to go, possibly go over by his place on like a Friday night unload get the engine and trans in place and thrash and get it all together and maybe get it out to the track like on a sunday because i think his local track only runs on sundays so that would actually work out good if we can kind of slam it out and then within this month if he has time he can kind of pick and dabble at it and kind of get everything ready in place and if not then sometime i think in september would be a really good you know maybe a couple weekends of work maybe not i don't know but um it's up to him ultimately, it's his car, however much he wants to work on it. Uh, I am providing the engine and trans. My plan was that 
I was going to build the engine and towards the end of the season, because I'm still trying to chase down an 1170 out of the car. So towards the end of the season, I was going to put the big block in the olds and take the small block out as the olds. I need an inspection and just probably make sure everything's good. The engine was going to come out this fall and I'm still going to be building that 347 stroker probably sometime early fall. Uh, that's going to get built. I have all the parts down there. I have pretty much everything ready to go for that. And so now you guys know my like contingent plan quite possibly. So hopefully tomorrow, today we're going out. We're going actually, I'm going over to my buddies to pick up Oldsmobile parts for a friend of mine and my roller rockers, which I'm buying off of that person. So, and then we're also going to hang out and go see a bank. But either way, um, uh, the goal is hopefully that tomorrow I can pick up like two gallons of kerosene and start cleaning down parts, marking stuff, bagging stuff, having stuff ready to go. And the block is obviously gonna need to get cleaned. And then early in the week, I'm gonna go over to my buddies. We're gonna put the crankshaft on his lathe and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna polish it on his lathe, um, kind of a backyard way of doing it semi-professionally for the lathe. Um, but nonetheless, it's not going to be like a polish down to size. It's just going to be a surface polish to clean up for new bearings. So, you know, clean out all the oil passages. I want to clean the block. I'm going to have to take out the gallery plugs at the back to spray like kerosene through there and get everything cleaned out. Um, and so hopefully by the end of the week, we can put this engine together. Um, it shouldn't take me more than a day and be able to do it that way and, and go from there. So I hope this update was informational for you guys. Babe flies open. So uh, I hope that was informational for you guys and you guys are gonna follow along, share, like, subscribe. We're gonna make this J-headed, big block olds, do some shit. And keep in mind, my friend JJ, had a very similar combination with the same J heads, torque or intake, and even the Demon Carb. Um, he had it in the 76 Le Mans running 1150s. And I actually have the transmission and torque converter from that car in my Cutlass. It's like I have his <laughs> entire drivetrain in pieces here, which is pretty funny. So uh, I buy all his old stuff. You got junk, we buy it. I wouldn't call it junk. It's good junk. I love junk. All right. Best junk out there. You know, if, it's, if it has a chance of living, we'll make it live. But, um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. And hopefully next weekend we can slam this bitch together. And by slam, I mean I am going to be measuring everything else out. So everything's going to be specced out. Clearances are going to be written down. We're going to have our blueprint sheet. And, uh, you know, we're going to build it as proper as possible. I know you see some of these people out there with their Facebook pages telling you, do plastic age this and do this. And you know, there's actually a way to still do shit proper at home with cheap professional instruments. I'm going to tell you flat out that the tools I'm going to buy to measure are only about 350 bucks. The most expensive thing, which I'm not going to buy is a CC kit with the beret and the graduated cylinder. I'm gonna do it the getaway. I showed you guys how to do it at home. I have a 25 milliliter graduated cylinder, which is really easy to read because of the increments and using an old CD with holes drilled in it till you get a meniscus, you can roughly gauge your CCs. Okay. Not super size driven. Of course, air compressor decides to go off while I'm talking, it scares the shit out of my wife. So, um, but this is easy to read. It gets you in the ballpark. Um, and you know, it'll get you within a couple of cc's, not dead nuts, but close. So on that note, guys, I know that I said I signed off and then came back on like right there, but <laughs> I'll let you guys go share, like, subscribe, follow along. Badass J-headed big block old is going to happen.